I swear, I don't know what you're talking about. Here, I'll show you. I'm getting a call from the chief. Put on a speaker. Moore, Goodman, Romano. I spoke to the man walking his dog last night. He said he usually walks his dog on this trail every day, and last night was the first time he saw the body laying here. This is a very important case, so I want you to check the scene to see if we can find anything. Then we'll send the body over to forensics. Take your time with this one. Review my notes and wear plastic bags around your hands to make sure nothing is tampered with. Plastic bags? What happened to gloves? This month's budget cut was a little too much for our station to handle. Excuse me, ma'am, but who are these other officers? They're officers from Wayside, Officer Tim Young and Jerry Williams. Given our financial situation, we were given a little assistance for this case. Hold on, where is Detective Jackson? Chief, he's not here. I texted him a while back, but he said he'd be here soon. I guess late is on time for him. Tell him I want to see him when he get back to the station. In the meantime, uh, Detective Goodman, you're in charge of making sure things run well. Yeah, with all this cutting-ish technology, it should be a breeze. I can't believe she keeps putting you in charge. You jealous, more? More of, uh, confused or angry is more accurate. Don't worry. I'm sure if you work hard enough, she'll put you in charge. But you don't work at all, Goodman! I don't know why she'd put you in charge. Listen, the chief is busy. She needs someone she trusts. That's why she put me in charge. You blame her for trusting me more than you two? Can't believe she doesn't trust us more. Honestly, I trust arsonists with five flamethrowers more than I trust you. What are we doing out here so early? Like, I have things to do today. Yeah, I guess we're gonna have to find something to do in this city once we're done with this case. What even is there to do in this rundown trash piece? <laughs> Don't say that. I'm sure there's something to do. No, your friend's right. Pretty much everything is being shut down or already has been shut down since Johnson Industries went under. No way. You're telling me there are no movie theaters? None. They were all funded by Johnson. What about a zoo to bring my kids? There is a zoo, but all the cages are empty since they don't have the funds to feed the animals. What about a library? No. no. All this because one company crashed? Uh, pretty much. Well, you see, Quisling is a cool city, and Johnson was a cool company, so it makes sense that we'd rely on them. But how did the company even fall in such a manner? Well, you see, there was an accountant that worked for Johnson that sabotaged his finances. They lost a lot of money and they had to move out of the city. Soon after, the mayor had some connect pulled some strings and got Orca to start funding our important things, like hospitals and stuff. Orca? What's that? An oil company that the mayor had connections to took over as a gesture or something. I don't know, if you ask me, I feel like there's something going on that they're not saying. Well, I remember hearing about this city all the time as a kid. Everyone wanted to work here. The city was booming. We're the lucky ones. Most of my friends are either at home or even in other cities. 
Yeah, I mean, just look at the police department. Why else do you think we have to call in cops from other cities? Maybe because the ones in our department keep talking all the time? Hold on, I'm just updating them on the city. That can wait, Romano. We have much more important things to do. Actually, no. Someone once said knowledge is the candle that lights us up in the darkest days. I think it was like Einstein. No, I'm pretty sure it was Big Bird from Sesame Street. All right, here's some stuff I found from the scene. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Impressive. Times like this, I remember why I prefer working alone. Hey, don't worry. He'll be here sometime. Yeah, and it won't be his first time coming to the scene late. And what happens when he does show up? He'll just start messing everything up. Oh, come on. He's not that bad. Whatever. Do we have an idea on the body? Let me see. <gasps> it, it's Mayor Bittenheimer. What? Let me see that. Who do you think could have done this? Oh, no. Mayor Bittenheimer was such a good person. Who could ever replace him? Hey, what's that? Look, the new guy found some evidence. Oh, wow! An officer completed a simple task. I guess I know who's going to be in charge tomorrow. It looks like a box of some sort. I don't think we should open it. These things could be trapped. He's got a point. It's best to put it away so we can inspect it later. Uh, I think we should open it. Why? Hey, you never know. It could have clues or, oh, maybe a gun. How on earth could a gun fit in this box? I don't know, but as the detective in charge, I demand you open it. All right, all right, Pandora, calm down. It's a case for a pet. Was it triggered with any explosives? What? How many times did your parents drop you when you were a kid? Guys, focus. Let's take a look at the body. I think Michelle took pictures earlier, just for a better look. Huh, that's weird. I know. Who wears that shade of pink? Well, look who it is. Some of my favorite officers. You're here too, Jennifer. <laughs> Officer Jackson, you're here finally. Yeah, I was busy. Anyways, who do we got here? Wow, this guy kind of looks like the mayor. Oh, gosh. I wonder why. Jackson, it is the mayor. So, uh, got any evidence? Well... We've got this and a little more. Thanks. Who are you? I'm Officer Tim Young from Wayside with my partner, Jerry Williams. We're here to help out. What's in this garbage bag? Huh. Must be some weird no, no, Wayside no. thing. Stop. No. Uh, never Nothing mind. much. Just some fabric. You guys taking a look at the body yet? Oh my goodness! How could we forget to look at the body? You see, this is why we need people like you on the scene. You know, a yes would have been perfectly fine. Anyways, let me take a look at it. What do we have here? Jackson. No, wait, you can't just... What are you even looking for? Any sign of struggle? I know he got shot, but maybe he got into a fight? Stop. Just stop. Come on, Jackson. What? Look what you've done. You messed up half the evidence. You've got your fingerprints all over the body. You know, all right. This one's on me. This one? This one? I've lost count of how many times you've messed up the evidence on one of our cases. I mean, honestly, can you go even a single case without messing something up? Come on, I'm not that bad. See, this is the problem. You don't even want to listen. Hey, don't we need to do that thing for the chief? No, I don't think so. Oh, uh, hey, um, the, you guys haven't seen our handcuffs. I bet you guys don't have those in Wayside. I'm pretty sure the same ones No, no, trust me. You guys need to see these. Come on. Really? That was the best thing you could think of? So... It's unbelievable. Every single time. I think you're overreacting. Look, you show up to the scene late, you mess with all the evidence, you distract everyone else. You want me to keep going? I don't see you minding when Romano's always sarcastic. Well, I'm not his partner, and for the record, he follows all the instructions that the chief gives. Anyways, it doesn't even matter that much. Every time you complain about me, and every time we end up solving the case, I don't see the problem with having a little fun along the way. For your information, we're cops, not clowns. If you want to have fun all day, then go join the circus. I'm sure you'll find a way to be late to that, too. Hey. Why were you even late today? I, I was saving a cat from a tree. Really? Yeah. I, on 4th and 17th. I had to save the cat before it, you know, fell. Before it fell? Yeah, before it fell. And you want to know the weirdest part? 
Sure. While I was saving the cat, it started making this noise. But it wasn't like a, a regular noise. It was this loud, repetitive screeching. Was it sick? No. It was my alarm. What do you... So it was all a dream? <laughs> what matters is that if it was real, I would have saved that cat. That's it. I'm sorry that you don't care about cats. God, why should you take everything so serious? You want to have a little fun? Detective Jackson! Come on, James, we're gonna miss him! So what if we do? Stop moving your mouth and start moving your legs. Oh, but all oh, they said. You'll get a good job, they said. I'm starting to think this whole thing is some Creole twisted joke. Who are you two? Hi, I'm Stacey Holmes, a local reporter from the Quinsling News. We met a while ago when you solved the case on Gerland Street. I wrote an article about it in the Times. It was probably one of my best works yet. Okay, thanks. I, I thought the Quizzling News shut down a little while back. Well, yeah, it did, but my love for journalism didn't. So I'm trying to make a documentary all about Quizzling and its prime and how it is now. Cool. Who's that? Trust me, I've been asking myself that question for three years now. That's James. He records everything I do. Right. So what do you want? Since you're at the scene, I was wondering if you'd tell us a little bit of what happened. Well, Mayor Bittenheimer has been murdered. Can you tell me what you found at the scene? It's gonna take me a while to remember everything. Well, um, take your time. <sighs> well, just make you... something up. I can't take this anymore. Shut up, James. Please don't mind him. Well, there's not really much to tell yet. I, we haven't really found anything. Can you please try and think of something? Nothing much. There's really just the odd strands of hair, some fabric. So basically nothing. We can speculate all we want, but as of now, we've got no clue why he died or who did it. Dang it. The one time I think I have a good story. These things take time. I, I'm sure if you come back tomorrow, we'll have something for you. Could you give me a call if you find out anything? You have my number. I think I gave it to you during that last case. Your number? Oh, you don't have it? Here, I better get a call. About the case, not like anything. Yeah, I'll let you know if I find anything. Did you hear that, James? Detective Jackson's gonna let me in on his case. You know he's gonna throw that away as soon as he gets home, right? You're just mad because I'm finally onto something. Don't worry, you can't stop me now. I've been carrying this camera around for three years. I'm not gonna stop you now. All right, Michelle, what do we have so far? Oh, hi guys. I've looked over the evidence a few times, jotted down some notes here and there. Do we know how he died? Well, he got shot, so... I think it's asphyxiation rather than blood loss. Nothing else I could find on the body. Do we have an estimate for when it happened? The wounds look relatively new. I wouldn't say it happened earlier than last night. So we're sure that the body wasn't dumped at the scene? We're sure. We found blood around the body. I'm thinking maybe it was some sort of rendezvous point? That was my thought when we were called to the scene. There was a CCTV camera there. I'd have the footage now, but it's taken a long time for it to process. I was at the scene shortly before you guys were, but I didn't really get to see much, just the body. Did you guys notice any signs of struggle when you arrived? Maybe there was. It's hard to tell since someone put their fingerprints all over the body. I said sorry. I can't believe you're still mad about this. She's not the only one. Jackson, in my office, please? Ma'am, I'm working on- That was an order. And while we're talking orders, you two. I have an assignment for you. The man who found Bittenheimer's body this morning lives in Wayside, and since that's your jurisdiction, I'd like the two of you to head back there and find out some more about him. Yes, ma'am. Did he get in trouble again? I think so. But it's none of our business. Some people never change. Anyways, I know there was a lot of evidence at the scene. Did you say you were done looking through it all? I looked at all the ones that were significant. There were a few things off about a couple of pieces I looked at. Such as? Well, there, for example, there was a handkerchief placed perfectly on a fence nearby. It looked really odd, so I tested it for DNA. Hmm. Did you find anything? No, nothing. Which is strange, right? I mean, how does a handkerchief not have DNA? I don't know. Did you find anything else? There are a few pieces of hair at the scene. In fact, they were on the mayor's jacket. I ran a DNA test and, well, I found a match. Who? Julia Bittenheimer. Wait, you mean... Yep. 
The mayor's ex-wife. But aren't they divorced? Why would she come back? You obviously haven't heard the news lately. What do you mean? Julia came back to Quisling to settle some disputes about their divorce. You know, money stuff. Wow, that's convenient. I know. It stuck out to me, too. I let Officer Lewis know about it. We should have some suspects soon. Why? What do you mean? Why would you tell Mark about it? Because he's in charge of gathering up suspects? Oh. Where have you been this last year? Right, of course. You know, I don't really interact with him much at work, so it kind of slipped my mind. I don't know, I still feel kind of bad for him. Well, don't. He did the wrong thing and he paid the price. He had a good reason, Jen. Are you telling me that if someone you love did something wrong, you wouldn't do what he did? Lie to the police? Hide evidence? You couldn't pay me to do that. Well, when you put it like that, I don't know. To this day, Mark still says that Jane wasn't the one who messed with the accounts. And you believe him? No, it's just... I don't know, the fact that he's still going with it? I don't know, maybe there's some truth to what he's saying. Or maybe he's deluded Michelle. He'd say anything to get his fiancée out of prison. Relax. What do you have against him anyway? Nothing. Really? Oh, it's because he's friends with Jack. No, it's not. Okay, so what if it is? You can't keep doing this, Jen. Doing what? Hating everything related to Jack. I mean, I know you two don't get along, but this is taking a little too far. No, it's not. Anyways, what do you know about any of this? I used to date Jack. A long time ago, before you two were partners. Oh, I didn't know that. If you don't mind me asking, what happened? Well, it was more of a mutual thing. I guess we rushed into things. I wasn't really thinking clearly. He wanted things one way and I wanted them another. So it had nothing to do with his antics? At first it was something different. But once you get to know him, he's a really nice guy. He just does things to make people happy. Like telling jokes? Yes. Lots. And I know he's a klutz, and he forgets things easily. But I'm sure whatever happened between you guys is just a big misunderstanding. I really don't. Oh. Hey, guys. Hey. How are you doing, Louis? Good. Hey, Michelle, thanks for the notes. I got a list ready for the suspects. All I need now is the chief's approval. Any idea where she is? She's with Detective Jackson. Again? Yeah, she seemed really angry this time. Fingers crossed it's nothing more than a warning. So you got a few suspects? Yeah, it's a rough idea. But after reviewing everything, I have three names. Who are they? Well, there's Julia Bittenheimer. I mean, there's just too much evidence pointing her way for us to just disregard her. Of course. Then, there's Friedrich von Bierpretzel. Why him? He just came back from Brookfield a couple weeks ago to spend some time with Mayor Bittenheimer. So you're bringing this guy in because of a coincidence? That, and the fact that when he was still a gear, he used to manage inventory in the warehouse where the mayor was murdered. Maybe it's worth it to ask him a few questions. And the third person? Some guy named Walter Jefferson. He was Hans' assistant and got fired from gear last year. After that, the guy's been completely under the radar. Until a few days ago. That's weird. You think that's weird? Wait till you hear this. On the way out from the scene, I found a card from gear on the side of the road near the warehouse. It could be any employee from gear, though. Couldn't it? I looked into it. This card is only given to people with special clearance within the company. That's strange. Now, I was thinking about the guy walking his dog. You know, the one who found the body. I wanted to speak to him, but he lives in Wayside. The chief just sent out those two Wayside officers to deal with it. I'm telling you, for the last time, you will not talk back to me. I'm not talking back. Well, maybe a little, but... I've had enough of this. This is the second time you've come to the scene late. Okay, that's not too bad. The second time this week. And now I hear you're screwing around with evidence. No, it's just I picked up the evidence for a closer look. And you did so without using a plastic bag. Oh, we're actually supposed to do that? I thought it was just a... Okay, now I get why that's... You got your fingerprints all over the evidence and we couldn't use it. And don't think I forgot about catching you in our archive room peeking through the files last week. But ma'am, that was... The thing is, I might have let you off the hook before, but this was the last straw. I I'm sorry, ma'am. Can I go now? You can, because you're off this case. Give me all the evidence and notes that you have. Come on, Chief. I swear it won't happen again. I don't want to hear it. And if you argue with me even more, I'll be asking for your badge as well. Fine. Ma'am, wait, please. What is it, Lewis? It's about Jack. Look, my decision regarding Jackson is final. Ma'am, if you would just listen to me, please. Do you want me to kick you off this case as well? If that's what it takes. Fine. What? You don't have to do this to Jack. Think about all he's done. I mean, sure, he's a little unorthodox, but he gets the job done. You're not making any sense. His positive attitude helps. 
And sure, maybe not everyone likes his personality, but it's wrong to say that we would be better off if you weren't with us. If only he had the same regard for himself as you do for him. But I'm sorry, Louis, there's just nothing that he could do to help us in this case. We already have two officers from Wayside that could easily take his place. Those two officers were sent back to Wayside to deal with a suspect. Louis, there's nothing I can think of that he can help us with. Excuse me, ma'am, but in fact, that's why I came here. I got the list of suspects that we could bring in for questioning. Jack used to do those all the time, so he has the experience. All right, we can have someone there with him. Jackson, come here. Yes, ma'am. Every part of me is telling me I'm going to regret this, but I've decided that I won't take you off the case completely. You'll be in charge of the questioning. Do you understand? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you so much, Chief. I won't disappoint. I'm not done yet. Yes? You are not to lay hands on any evidence without consulting another member of the team. You will report all evidence to the station, and you will not handle any evidence by yourself. If you fail to comply, this will be your last case. Do you understand me? I understand. Good. You didn't have to do that for me, Mark. You're right, but now you owe me. <laughs> How many times have you said that? Honestly, I've lost count. What were you thinking out there, Jack? I wonder where you'd be if it weren't for me. Not at this station, I'll tell you that. You have to watch yourself, though. That's the angriest I've seen the Chief in a long time. Yeah, I know. She's never given me the badge to rip before, though. Sorry, man. I don't mean to be a pain. I get that. It's just that I can't really work well if everything's always so tense. When you get going on a case, there's no stopping you until it's solved. There is one thing. Jennifer? Mm-hmm. I get that she's my partner. It's just that she happens to be the only person at the station who has such a huge problem with me. Not everyone will like the things you do. You just have to live with that. Pretty soon you can add the chief to that list. The only reason you're still here is because you keep solving cases. Speaking of which, you're doing the questioning. Yeah, it's been a while, but I'll give it a shot. Need any help? Trust me. The last thing I need is to show the chief that I can't handle a simple question by myself. Well, it's not so- Mark, I'll be fine. Good luck. I got my own problems to worry about. You want a case? Yeah, something like that. I'll try and explain it later. I gotta go. Hello? Yeah, I can talk. Did you get back the results? Listen, I don't care about Greek mythology. Just tell me what you found. Who is it? Oh, what do you want, Jen? Are you a suspect? Because I don't see your name on here. Funny. Seriously, though, what are you doing here? Wait, you don't know? The chief called me a couple minutes ago. Says she wants me to help you out with the questioning. Really? She doesn't think I can handle it? For the record, I don't want to be here either, so don't think this is great for me. At least we can agree on something. Come in. Hello there, Mr. Friedrich von Beer Pretzel, if that's even your real name. Any idea why you might be here today? Unfortunately, I do. It's concerning Hans, isn't it? Yeah, so tell me, sir, what was your relationship like with Mayor Bittenheimer? I tell you, as far as I know, Hans had the Midas touch when it came to business, so it made sense to be friends with him. But seriously, we had a great relationship, Hans and I. So great a relationship that you came back to this city to meet up with him days before his murder? Let me guess, that's just a coincidence? I only came here for a vacation, detective. To get away from things, back to the city I love. He invited me to stay with him. I was with him last night before he left. Did he tell you where he was going? No. We were talking about his re-election campaign, and all of a sudden he seemed worried and excused himself. I didn't think much of it at first, but now... He was very popular, especially given how he dealt with the Johnson crisis. Why would the re-election worry him? I don't know if it was the re-election that worried him or not, but he left in a hurry, as far as I remember. I see. So tell me, how long ago did your relationship with the mayor start? Oh, it was many years ago, back when I was first out of college. We both worked at his father's company, Gear. And, Mr. Beer Pretzel, how would you describe your relationship with Hans more recently? Every relationship, whatever form it may be, has its ups and downs. He was a bit... How do I say, stubborn, after he became the CEO of Gear, used to harp often. But it's probably just the stress of the job more than anything. Did you see him often after he became mayor? The job of mayor was his dream, and he worked very hard to get to that point. 
It was nearly impossible to get a hold of him once he had it. So you two weren't as close as you were before? It was always harder when I didn't work with him. About that. You said you used to work at Gear, but roughly a decade ago you suddenly left the company out of nowhere. Care to explain that? I thought that the tech industry was going nowhere. People in my field didn't understand the market. I felt like there was something big happening in the housing market. So I foolishly jumped ship. The housing market? Really? Ten years ago, the tech industry was at its peak. And even more so, all the signs were there of a crash in the housing market. Surely, someone as smart as you wouldn't have made that kind of gamble. Look, back in those days, making quick, panicked decisions was my Achilles heel. I will admit it. Detective, I understand that I still lose sleep over it, and if there's nothing else to ask about here, I ask that you please do not remind me of that decision. Okay, then. Back to what happened last night, sir. Do you know where the mayor's body was found? I don't have the slightest idea. It was... It was near Proview Lake. Know anything about that area? Any buildings you might be familiar with? I don't have the geography of this city memorized. You and your words. It was behind a warehouse that, as of right now, you were the last person to have managed. Strange, isn't it, Friedrich? All of a sudden, someone close to you turns up dead, and is in your building that only you and your associates have access to. So what? It's all a big coincidence? At the end of the day, Detective, isn't every action, every word, every meeting, just a big coincidence. Um... Okay, I think we have what we need. Anything else you'd like to tell us, sir? No. Well then, I guess we're done here. We'll get back to you if we need to. The officer outside will escort you out. Well, that was nice. Thanks for cutting me off like three times. Yeah, sorry. I just got a weird vibe off him, you know? Tell me about it. Anyways, he seems too smart to leave that many clues behind. I mean, a murder behind his own warehouse? Yeah, that's true. We're ready. Thank you. Hello there, Miss, uh, Julia Bittenheimer, if that's even your real name. Oh, not this again. What's your relation to the victim? I'm his wife. Uh, ex-wife, rather. So, Miss Bittenheimer, I take it you understand why you're here today? I do. The officers outside filled me in. You two were together for a long time. When did you first meet? Why, of course, it was in college. He was quite the character. Bold, smart, charismatic. I was instantly drawn to him. Were the two of you together when he first got a job at Gear? We were, yes. We dropped out of college soon after to pursue our dream in the city. We were just kids. We were young and foolish. Months of looking for a job went to waste. In the end, Hans had to swallow his pride to ask his father for a job. Swallow his pride? How so? You see, Hans was a man of a huge ego, one that rivaled his father's. To get him to ask a favor of his father was as if to ask the world to turn on its head. But in the end, Hans got a job at his father's tech company as an advisor. Gear is the same company he became CEO of, correct? Yes. You don't seem so torn about Hans' passing. Well, he made a lot of decisions that I just don't agree with. He was becoming a person who was hungry for power and wealth. He was a monster. Not the man I fell in love with. He ever do anything to you? Oh, no. He never did anything to me. In fact, he would go to great lengths to try and keep me happy. Why don't you tell us more about the things that he did? He treated his employees poorly, slashed their salaries and benefits, took credit for their work. At first, it didn't bother me too much, but soon I began to understand what his choices did to others. This day, I still feel guilty. Well, you can feel guilty all you want, but did you ever tell Hans about it? Yes, many times. I advised him against his decisions. He would always yell and make a scene. It makes my skin crawl to people to hear people praise him for his actions. Well, I've lived here a long time. This is the first time hearing of something like this. Precisely. Hans was good friends with Clarence Tyler. That name sounds familiar. He's a local media mogul who owns every news outlet in the city. So your husband had shady connections, used them to do terrible things, and you knew about it? Well, I didn't necessarily know. Not the way you think. Of course not, Miss Bittenheimer. 
because if it's the way I think, then you're going to land in a pool of trouble. So tell me, did you know or not? I knew what he was doing, and I thought it was regular business. I never realized the extent of his damage. And the day I did, well, is the day this ring lost every meaning to me. So, tell me, Miss Benheimer, when Hans became mayor, he had to give up his role in Gear Incorporated, right? That is correct. Which meant he could no longer be the CEO? Yes. Weren't you always touted to be the one who would succeed Hans in case anything happened? It was all speculation at the time. There was no such plan, really. Are you sure about that? Because on multiple occasions, Hans mentioned you in a succession plan. So who's lying? You or Hans? I guess when I heard he was running for mayor, I decided it wouldn't be right for me to be running a side job. I, he offered me the position, but I declined. All right, Ms. Bittenheimer. Could you please tell me what you were doing after you divorced Hans a few months ago? I went to Canada to live with my parents. I didn't care too much about being with my family as much as I did about just escaping Hans. Did he try and contact you after you left? Yes, often. Too often. He'd always apologize and promise to change, but that was a promise I'd heard one time too many. I was just glad to get away from him. All this talk, it, it, you came back to see Hans just a few days ago. I'm noticing a trend here, ma'am. Yes. See, when we got our divorce, there was a handsome sum of money involved. In fact, it was so much that our financial advisors told us they would handle it. A week ago, I got a message from Hans saying that I needed to go back to Quisling to handle a certain portion of the divorce money. Miss Bittenhoff, I'd like to say a few things, and you tell me what you think. So you moved to a completely different country, come back after a long time to settle disputes with your husband, and a few days later, he dies. I can assure you, officer, I didn't see him recently. Definitely not last night. Really? Because we found strands of your hair on his jacket at the scene. Okay, fine. I might have met up with him earlier yesterday. Ah, the trend continues. So, tell me, Miss Bittenheimer, why did you two meet up yesterday? Just to talk. He was being very insistent, and I had nothing to do anyways. So all this talk about escaping him and him being a monster, yet you meet up with him anyways? It's all true what I said about him. I just never got to hear his side of the story that well. But I swear, all we did was go out for coffee. Plus, his best friend Friedrich was staying at his place anyway, so there was no way I was going there. How does that explain the hairs on his jacket, though? Hans always wears the same coat. I suppose a few strands got on it when he hugged goodbye. I went back to my hotel and I stayed there for the night. I have the hotel I've been sitting here if you don't believe me. Is this genuine? We'll check at the hotel. The detective outside will escort you out. Thank you, ma'am. We'll be in touch. Now that I might check out, but I just don't trust your one bit. I, I, I didn't do it. I swear. I swear I, did, I didn't do it. I, 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 I didn't do it. Nothing. Hello there, Mr. Jefferson. And if that's even... Yeah, yes, it's my name. It's my name. It's my name. Uh, I didn't do anything, though. I, hey, nothing. How, how did I... How'd you know I was gonna... Uh, the two guys out there said you were gonna do that. But they're not allowed to... Mr. Jefferson, before we continue, I'm going to need you to calm down. Fine. Okay. It says here you worked for Gear Incorporated for uh, five years as Mayor Benheimer's assistant, correct? Yes. How was your relationship with him? Uh, it was alright. Not too good, but not too bad either. How did you feel about your job? Uh, I liked it. Um, some things were a bit tedious at times, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. Strange. If it was nothing you couldn't handle, then why did you quit? It's a long story. I I'm sure you wouldn't want to hear it. Don't worry about us, Mr. Jefferson. Just answer the questions we ask you. It was all an accident. Uh, I was just routinely looking through the finances of the company a few couple of years ago, and I noticed a virus. Uh, I, I was going to report it to IT, but I realized it had been planted there on purpose. So you didn't end up reporting it? No, uh, it was interesting. Um, so I decided to linger on it. What do you mean, linger? Well, uh, I've always been fascinated by, te by technology, and uh, I code in my free time. I'm sorry, this has something to do with why you left, right? Yes, indeed it does. Um, I was tinkering on with the virus when I realized it was a prototype from Gear Incorporated. Um, codename Atropos. What? What does that mean? Atropos is the Greek goddess of fate. 
What? I paid attention to history class. That's beyond the point. Why would Ear even care about a virus like that? I'm assuming it was a way of warding off intruders. Um, like an antibody of sorts. Did Hans know about the virus by any chance? Um, when I talked to him about it, he said he recognized the, the software, but he said he didn't know any more about it. Told me not to tell anyone. Uh, I, I couldn't internalize something this big. I, I wanted to quit. So is that when you quit gear? Not exactly. Are you kidding me? Who to what? You think it's some kind of joke? What my partner is trying to say is, what happened next? Hans sensed my anxiety and called me into his office. Uh, he said he knows about me and my family. And did you stay quiet about it? No, uh, I didn't. And it was perhaps my greatest mistake. The police conducted a small investigation, but companies like Gear have the means to cover up small mishaps like this. I bet Hans didn't like that investigation. Uh, he didn't. Uh, the following week he called me to his office. He forced me to quit. More threats against my family, and I just couldn't take it. Where did you work after you quit? Uh, I, I couldn't. I was too ashamed and scared. Uh, my family felt I had gambled with their lives, and so they, they left. Well, sir, I'm sorry that happened to you. Had Hans contacted you since? Uh, not exactly. What do you mean, not exactly? It's a yes or no question. Last night, I got a letter in the mail from him. It was letters to... Letters to my family. Uh, he was paying them regularly to break contact with me. Did Han send these letters? Uh, I don't know, but I, I wouldn't think so. Uh, I didn't have much time to think about it, though, before I, I got a text from none other than Hans. What did the text say? Nothing. Mr. Jefferson, you're testing my patience. What did the text say? He said he wanted to meet at a certain location. Uh, given the context and the timing, I thought he wanted to speak with my speak with me about my family, uh, and so I I came armed. What happened after you two reached the warehouse? The the second I saw him approach me, I I couldn't help it. Uh, I pulled up my gun, and he just froze. It, it, it was quiet for a bit, and. Uh, he started talking money or something, and then suddenly he put his hand in his pocket, and after that it was all a blur. Sir, what do you remember after this blur? Uh, I, I heard a loud noise, and um, then Hans just dropped to the ground. Uh, I, I looked around to check my surroundings, but I, I couldn't see anything. I, uh, I didn't do anything wrong, I swear. I didn't do nothing. I think we have our guy. Anything else you'd like to tell us? Uh, I, I know it's hard to believe me after everything I've said, but I swear I didn't do it. Uh, I, I, my, gun, my gun still had six bullets in it. So? Uh, the, the gun I bought, it was a revolver, the one I brought with me. Uh, I, I know it was late at, late at night when I checked, but I swear I didn't do anything wrong. I, it, was, it wasn't me. I've heard that phrase is not hold up all in court. I'm sorry, sir. You've left us with no choice. Walter Jefferson, you are under arrest for the murder of Mayor Benheimer. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can be used against you in court. What? I'll go get it. So, you're Detective Jack Jackson. Last time I checked. I've heard a lot about you. People haven't forgotten what you did a year ago. I see what you're doing. Look, I'm not new to this game. You. If you think you can scare me, you might as well save your breath. I'm telling you the truth, Detective. Like I said, I'm not falling for it. From what I've heard, you were under very strict orders not to investigate it. And yet you did. I'm just trying to help you, Detective. You made some enemies with some very powerful people that day. You know about the investigation? I'm not the only one. Not the only one to know about the little side project you have ongoing. I'm just looking out for you, Detective. There's some very dangerous people after you. Some could be closer than you might think. What, what do you mean? Here, take a look at this. What's this? Coming for those you love. Get away as soon as you can. All right, sir. Come with me. I'd be careful, Detective. 
Hey, what's up? Uh, it's been a long day. Uh, hey, let's meet up at that restaurant, corner of 4th and Lincoln. Yeah, I heard they had great croissants. Only one way to find out. Yeah, of course. No, I'll be there, don't worry. Yeah, I'm at the restaurant right now, with Jack. No, he's, he's in the bathroom. I'll talk to you soon. Who are you on the phone with? No one. It's just work stuff. I swear. One of these days, you have to tell me about that case you're on. I wish I could, man. It's just all this confidentiality stuff. I'd rather just wait until it's all over to explain. Whatever it is. I'm sure you'll figure it all out. I hope so. So, this is different. Yeah, I guess I'd try out something new. No kidding. Are you both ready to order? Yeah, I'll have the, uh, croissant, please. I'm sorry, but we don't serve croissants. We're an Italian restaurant. <laughs> oh. Guess they don't serve croissants. In that case, we'll have the chicken alfredo with a side of... How much does the red wine cost? One fifty. Only a dollar fifty. No, one fifty, as in one hundred fifty dollars. Oh, in that case, I'll just have this water refilled. Okay, and what will you have, sir? Uh, for an appetizer, I'll have the eggs Benedict, and for the main course, I'll have the Caesar salad. Thanks. Great. I'll have your food out in about a couple minutes. So they have eggs Benedict, but they don't have croissants. I don't know. Been a while since I saw you eating a salad. Yeah, I'm starting up my diet again. For what, the fifth time this week? Hey, I'm serious this time. If you say so. What's wrong? Oh, nothing. There's obviously something wrong. You look awful. I don't know. It's just, I guess I took for granted the time I had to myself earlier. You know, it was just me and you hanging out more often than working. Those were the days, weren't they? I think it's been almost a whole year. Really? That long? Wow, it feels like just yesterday that you were... Never mind. It's okay, Jack. I've come to grips with it. Plus, when you're actually working every day like you and me are now, it's really easy to forget that I've been demoted. Well, it could have been a lot worse. You're right, it could have been. You're lucky the chief didn't fire you. Yeah. Do you miss her? Not really. I see her almost every day. What? No, not the chief. I mean Jane. Oh. I miss Jane a ton. She was my everything. Here's your chicken pot pie, and for you, sir, your baby back ribs. Enjoy. Do you think we should tell her? Nah, I think this is a sign. Even the restaurant doesn't want me on my diet. Uh, seems like it. Anyways, uh, about before, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have asked. It's funny, actually. Just the other day, I had to cancel our reservation for our honeymoon. Where was it? Monte Cristo Island. It was her dream. But look, there's no point in running away from reality. At the end of the day, I only have myself to blame. I guess I should have told the chief about it beforehand, but you know what they say, hindsight is twenty twenty. And now my fiance's in prison for something she had nothing to do with. I get it. Yeah, I'm sure. Have you gone to see her since then? A couple times. How is she? Life in prison isn't the best, but at least I get to see her. But I've been talking too much. I'm not going to make this about me. Not right now, at least. I'm just happy that I have someone like you. I just wish everyone felt that way. Look, about Jennifer. I've known her for a long time, and she's really serious about her job. If I'm being honest, you should stop trying to get through to her by being funny and ridiculous. I mean, it worked with you. Yeah, well, not everyone sees the good side of you. And I'm partnered with the one person that doesn't. Are you two enjoying your food? Yeah, it's great. Actually, I think you, uh... I think you should tell the chef that this is really good. Will do. Anyways, about Jennifer. Look at things from her perspective. Maybe try and be the partner that she wants you to be. Maybe it's too late now. She definitely thinks I'm an idiot. To be honest, I thought you were an idiot too when we were first partners. Thanks. Hey, but listen, it just took one case. I still remember it. We were at the haunted house. Remember that one? Not really. There was this break-in. Some person was hiding in the old house of mirrors. You remember? Um, no, not really. It was that one time, you know, there was a tech malfunction and a whole lot of smoke. And, well, I ran into one of the mirrors five times. Oh yeah, I remember now. 
It was really hard to find him with all the smoke and mirrors, but when we approached him, he was frightened. I mean, the guy was shaking. You remember what you did? What did I do? Crack a few jokes? No, you didn't. You saw he was scared and you put your gun down and started walking towards him. I thought you were about to make a mistake. Turns out, I was the one who made a mistake doubting you. You talked to him and assured him that everything would be okay. And just like that, he walked out with you. I guess it's the one time my big mouth actually did any good. You didn't only catch the guy, Jack, but you also earned my trust. And that's what you need to do with Jennifer. Take her to a haunted house? No, earn her trust. Would you like your water spilled? Yes, please. Well, I haven't even touched my water yet, so... I I made it clear I didn't want it refilled, right? I don't... Surprise, everybody! Come on, we practiced this. What? The lines, what we're supposed to say. So, what's the big deal? I thought we'd agreed that you'd say, don't move. Yeah, but where's the fun in that? Except I was supposed to say, or else we'll shoot. How do you follow surprise everybody with, or else we'll shoot? It's just not natural. But we're supposed to get their attention, right? Yeah, but not like... Should we try again? (sighs) I guess. Hold on a second. What was that? Couldn't tell you if I knew. Shouldn't we go after them? I didn't bring any of my gear. Plus, I have a feeling they'll be back. Attention! This isn't a drill. Yeah, no, why don't we just ignore the last ten minutes we spent practicing this? Come on, this is far more intimidating. Plus, it's always good to improvise every once in a while. Easy for you to say. You're not the one staying up all night writing this out. Okay, okay. If it takes you all night to write this out, then I don't think I'm the problem. Whatever, this is why I wanted to start. Hello? Look, we're not here to play, okay? Any one of you tries to attack us, bang. Any one of you tries to call the police, bang. Any one of you even moves, bang. Now nod your head if you understand. I thought you told them not to move. What do you guys want? <laughs> what do we want? <laughs> what, what do we want? Uh, I'm not supposed to tell you what we want. What we want is simple, and it's none of your business. Just let us do our thing, and we'll be out of here soon. Just tell us what you want, and we'll see to it that no one gets hurt. Huh. Nah, there's no fun in that. We'll just keep doing it our way. We don't need to do this. You're right. We don't need to do this. We want to do this. I'm not going to let you go through. Oh, really? And what are you going to do about it? I don't know what exactly, but I'm pretty sure it involves a whole lot of trouble. (laughs) That's cute. Hey, do your thing. Finally, I've been aching for some real action. No, no, no! Stop. No one has to get hurt. Well, that's in your hands now, isn't it? Jack, it's alright, I'll be fine. No, come back. Come back. This is all my fault. 